Yo, hotnewhiphop.com. They call me Heineken. Ooh. And I am the ESSO. Everyone sees sounds official. Oh, man. Who we got on the set with us right now, man? Hey, it's your boy, Band Up Sick, man. You know, I'm in the building right now. I'm in L.A. You know, we just cooling. You know what I mean? Promoting this cap life. You know what I mean? All right. Yes. All right. So tell us about the cap life record. Uh, I mean, Cap Life is a crazy, it's a crazy record how it came about, you know what I mean? Um, uh, it was basically supposed to be a record that, you know, tells about the industry and how a lot of these people be capping in their raps. You know, everybody got the money, everybody got the cars, everybody got the jewelry and the bitches, you know what I mean? But when you see them in real life and, you know, you, you see all the things that they, you know, that they doing, it's a lot of cap in their rap. So it was just kind of to separate the real life from the, from the rap life. And we dropped the video and that thing ended up going crazy. Mm. Literally. So what what what's something that the general audience doesn't know that rappers be capping about that you're like, nah, especially with the pandemic, shit got exposed. What's something you'd be like, nah, that's not how the industry goes. I mean, man, it's a lot of people out here just, you know, acting like they're accustomed to the lifestyle. You know what I mean? The lifestyle in general, you know what I mean? Everybody got drip nowadays. You know what I mean? Everybody, everybody running around here with fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Everybody posting rentals. <laughs> you know what I mean? Airbnb. You know what I mean? Yeah, it all look good for the for the social media. You know, from an outside looking in. But you know, when you when you know these people and you know some of their situations, it's just funny. You know what I mean? I feel you. I feel you. I, I'm I'm very very hip to that. I always tell people about that. You know what I'm saying? Factual. So, how how'd you get from um in Minnesota to LA? Man, that's a story, bro. I um, you know, I was going through it at a point in time with my BM. And um, you know, I just felt like Minnesota just wasn't a place for me no more. You know what I mean? I wasn't able to really see my kid like I wanted to, you know what I mean? So I was like, you know, I don't want to look back at my life and wish I chased a dream. So I was like, you know, fuck it. I I, I jumped in the car, I had a couple thousand dollars in my name, I drove out to LA. Slept in my car for probably like three to four weeks. I messed around and bought a store um, from this dude. I, I rented a store for probably like three or four months and then uh, saved up enough money and then end up, you know, paying for a lot of promotion, you know, a little bit of the lifestyle, end up coming on a couple come ups along the way. And here we are today. Okay. So what's the relationship like not with your baby mother, but like with your kid? Because Essentially, you said you had to move away from your kid to pursue your career, but that's a that's a different mentality too. Yeah, man, that was a tough one. You know what I mean? Because you know, um, before that, we was kind of uh, already kind of beefing a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, for like maybe two years, I would say. So I was on and off seeing her already. So then I had finally got to the point where I was seeing her again, and then we kind of you know went into a situation. But now things good. You know what I mean? You know, I done, I done went through my trials, my tribulations, and, you know, I think I passed my, you know, my first test, I would say, with God. You know what I mean? So it, he bought all the stuff that I, you know, that he felt like I deserved back into my life. I'm just what, were you, what were y'all beefing over, though? Um, It was a lot, though. It, it was, so we first came to move out here in California, and, you know, California is an expensive place. We tried it in 2017. You know, it didn't work. You know what I mean? We ended up staying with Taz James. You know what I mean? Rick James' son, so to speak. You know what I mean? Which is crazy. <laughs> it, he had a lot going on, man. I'm not going to really put his business out there, but bro had a lot going on. You know what I mean? And um, eventually it drove, up, it drove us back to Minnesota. You know what I mean? So we ended up falling out from that. She felt like, you know, I kind of had my, my kid in the situation or whatever the case may be. So, and, you know, it was all, you know, based upon the lifestyle of trying to come up. You know what I mean? So... You know, once we got past the whole, you know, oh, you're just being selfish. I think you're doing this just to be selfish for you. And then it was, you know, more so, oh, I, I really see why you're doing this. You really did all that, to, you know. That's when you started making money, right? <laughs> ah, what a coincidence. Okay. What a coincidence. Yo, I, I let the story go, but I, I, I had to jump in when I knew it came to, Oh, now I see why you're doing it because you forked over a couple dollars. Like I told you, so and so and so and so. My bad. Now I get it. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. I got you work, man. <laughs> Yo, tell me how it felt to be written up in a billboard, though. Saying hey, that, that was, was the first thing. 
that was major, you know. Shout out to Urban Grind Jess, you know what I mean? Uh, I felt like that was that was real. That was my first time ever really being on something like on that platform, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I really feel like my fan base really reciprocated to it because they on Facebook they went crazy. I got honest shares, you know. I got a bunch of new fans that you know probably wouldn't know about my music just from people mm-hmm. sharing it. And um, now I feel like I might got the light in my city because you know they really looking at me as like one of the leaders you know, to really kind of put it on. Because when you think about Minnesota, you don't really think about nobody. You know what I mean? You're like, ooh, she prays. Didn't, you know? didn't Next come from Minnesota, the group Next? Yeah, 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 singers, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, you got Next, you got Prince and all the rest of them. You can think about that, but you definitely don't think about rapping. You don't think about rapping, especially nowadays rapping, you know what I mean? So I feel like, um. What I what I'm doing right now is trying to change history. You know what I mean? I'm trying to I'm trying to make it Minnesota what Atlanta is right now. You know, we got no labels there. Ain't nobody really looking at the talent, and it's a lot of talent. Mm. Definitely. I mean, what's it gonna take for people to musically look at a city that's in the middle of America? It's dumb cold, <laughs> and other than sports, ain't much for. It's not a vacation destination. I mean, yo, let's keep it real. Let me jump in real quick. They used to say the same thing about Toronto. Yo, Fact. for years, Canada, people didn't touch nobody from Canada because they had weird music business rules. They didn't understand the game. But look Fact. at Canada now. You but got Canada, Drake, but huh? Canada is more like a New York town versus... But, but, it did, but I'm telling you, it didn't matter, son. They didn't touch Canada. It wasn't until Drake, my dude, because Cardinal Fisher was the only one that was yeah. coming from Canada. They got weird music business rules up there. I'm, I'm just saying that there are places that St. Louis, be, before Nelly was there, nobody cared about St. St. Louis neither. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it takes people, people, people willing to put out dope music and put their money behind their music. Exactly, mm-hmm. and that's and that's what we missing, I think. Honestly, um, a lot of artists in Minnesota go off the, um, you know, I, I want to say organic, but I would also say the cheap approach. You know what I mean? Because if it's organic, you you popular already. You know what I mean? And if you know you ain't popular, then you know you got to spend some money to get seen. <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense. So I feel like a lot of people are just cheap, and a lot of people um and, and a lot of people kind of like got, got that crabs in the bucket mentality, bro. Like 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 for an example, I dropped cap life at least 600 of those 1,200 comments and there's people pulling me back in the bucket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I man, he ain't Minnesota. He ain't this. Never heard of him. You know what I mean? So it's like, it don't matter how big an artist going to be from that state. You just going to have that mentality there. And I feel like once a person finally break, uh, breaks past the threshold, you ain't going to be able to use those, you know, that, that mentality against them. Once you're popular, everybody supports you, bro. You know what I mean? That's just yeah. how unfortunately. I think you know what it is too. People are afraid of getting left behind. Yep. Um, you know, also everyone always feels like they can't come up together. It's some sometimes a mentality, people be like, This shit is about me. Facts. And I'm like, the most successful people are all in the group and they busting their shit together. So the blueprint is there, but you know, you get some people, there are some people that have a Ferrari. And they hype that the man got a Lambo. And there's a nigga with a Porsche, and he mad that his man's got a Benz. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> bro. That's so how you, it know, is. you know, so what, what's the origin behind your name, man? Um, so it goes back into my whole story. You know what I mean? I used to go by Sick the Punchliner. So um, I, I had a bunch of, of music out at that time when I was rapping in. You know, I started by, like, in 2016. So, you know what I'm saying? I had songs with King Louie, songs with uh, FBG Billionaire Black, Taste 600, a lot of Chicago artists, because I'm originally from Chicago. Um, mm. so oh, I, I oh, really, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so I was really pushing the Chicago way, you know what I mean? Because I'm really, that, that's where I'm from, that's my stomach grounds. I just moved to Minnesota at a real young age, and I was living there for a while, so it just kind of transitioned. Okay. But anyways, um, so I was sick to punchline. I, you know, the drill movement kind of died after they killed Zach TV. You know, RP Zach TV. Yeah. He was like the, the last um, platform for Chicago, to be honest. You know what I mean? Him and Say Cheese was kind of neck and neck at this time. You know what I mean? And then once Zach died, all of his, you know, subscribers went to Say Cheese, which is what blew Say Cheese to where he at right now. But um, then I was like, you know, it's time to rebrand. 
You know what I mean? It's time to get out of this this era that ain't got nothing but, you know, death, jail, or, uh, you know, just a bunch of negative energy around it. And, um, you know, all this is just for clout. You know what I mean? Something that ain't even money. We ain't making no money from it. We not, we, we just losing each other and we battling each other. We ain't even doing it to battle, you know, a supposed enemy or something. So when I came to terms with that, I was like, you know, it's time to really rebrand. And then the come up came all at the same time. So I was like, you know what? Ban up sick. You know what I mean? That's that, you know, I, I had to ban up. You know what I mean? And and not only monetary, but, you know, with my knowledge and I enrich my knowledge. You know what I mean? So I banned up in a bunch of different aspects. Uh, but what 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 made you get to that point, though? Did you just wake up one day and you just like, yo, this is the mentality that I'm going to put forth? What was it that got you even thinking different? Um... I ain't gonna lie, like I said, when they killed Zach, that really opened my eyes, you know what I mean? Cause um, you know, he really, he really was a good dude, you know what I mean? He yeah. really showed love to a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for, you know, somebody to take him out, it was a little bit bigger than, you know what I mean, um, what we can kind of see beyond the, the front lines. So that just kind of opened my thinking, like you gotta move different, you know what I'm saying? You gotta put different energy out here into the world. You know what I mean? And um, ultimately, you just got to become a better person and a better human if you expect better yourself. You know what I mean? And that's just kind of what changed the RPZ. And now you in L.A., what's the mentality like create, creatively? You know, you got Chicago roots, you got Minnesota roots. Yeah. yeah. You're in La La Land, that's a whole <laughs> different animal. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. L.A. is so um, in, 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 inspirational, man. You know, because you just got all of the all of the things that you've seen people build here, you know, and then you got all of these different people that embrace you differently. You know, LA people different here, bro. You know what I'm saying? They, they got a different mentality. I think it's because to be here, you got to have some. So a lot of people that don't have nothing, and I won't say it like that because we have a third of, you know, the homeless population here, but far as like, um, <laughs> you know, far as like, um, you know, people actually embracing something. You don't really have the crabs in the barrel kind of mentality too much here because people got it already. You know what I mean? It ain't cheap here. You know what I mean? It ain't like, you know, when you're living in Chicago or Minnesota where the rent, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars, you know, everybody kind of making, you know, maybe fifteen, sixteen hundred every two weeks. So you know, when you're done paying bills, you're looking at the next person like, man, I hate you shining. How you get that? You know what I mean? That's just kind of the mentality. He ain't kind of they pulling up in Ferraris. You know what I mean? I just call so you. Ass. So, so you ain't going to Compton and South Central or nothing and watch. No, no. And I mean, even 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 in the hood. Don't get me wrong. When I first came here, I, I was doing Postmates. You know what I mean? And Instacart. So I was all through the hood delivering. And uh, you still got some money living in the hood. Don't let them trick you. You know what I mean? You can't be broke living in the hood out here. You know, Cali make sure of that for sure. You're gonna be like them homeless folks in the tents, for real, for real. So it's. You know, it's a different mentality. I'm gonna leave it like that. Definitely. Now, most definitely. Um, as you out in LA, who you looking to link up with on these projects you got coming up, man? Because I heard all the Chicago dudes you had, then you know that's a lot of wave and energy. Because you know, for years Chicago was a cheat code if you wanted to get your numbers up, like academics and them dudes. So. Now that, you, that waving there, how you doing to get that extra notoriety aside from, you know, driving the engine machine of paying for your promotion and things like that? Um, well, right now I'm gonna be messing with my cousin, you know what I mean, Ruger. You know what I mean? I've been, you know, man, him, we've been messing around since young, you know what I mean? Okay. But he going crazy right now, you know, he getting millions of views. So I think man, him about to do some music. You know, we just got off the phone yesterday actually, and he told me he about to come out to LA in a couple of days. So uh, we finna do some music. Um, you know, you got a bunch of industry artists here that we looking at, you know, we've been looking at Trippy, we've been looking at Uzi, you know what I'm saying? A couple of these people, you know, that are kind of fit in the budget of what we're trying to do. So, um, we just been kind of looking, we don't want to go too big yet, because, you know, I, I really want to go through the process. I don't want to skip no lines, I don't want to cut no corners, and I really don't want no handouts, and I don't want nobody to, um, look like they started my career. So, I would I mean, rather, <laughs> you know what I mean, I mean do it on old J. Cole, Raptor, you know, Planet Wars was all uh, all band up sick, wasn't no feature on that. You know what I mean? So I might ride that way for a minute and just mess with Ruby, you know, all family. 
do you ever think about going going back to Minnesota to do to do some of your visuals? Yeah, yeah, we got some plan. I was supposed to go back and do this forms and furs. Um, right now it's too cold. It's like negative thirty, so I ain't I ain't going back. <laughs> but uh, I'm supposed to be going back there. I got this Minnesota mixtape I'm gonna do. That that's another thing I'm doing. I'm um I'm really embracing Minnesota because like I said, there's so much talent that it um is is overlooked. Mm. So I'm doing this Minnesota mixtape. I'm gonna put a bunch of promotion into it and get a lot of artists. It's gonna be 40 artists, one tape. You know what I mean? So we're gonna get a whole bunch of artists seen on this. And y'all gonna really see us, man. Y'all gonna be like, I ain't even know all these people was over here doing all this crazy shit. A lot you know of know niggas, man. How you gonna keep the audience's attention? Um, we gonna put time. We gonna put two on. We gonna put two to three artists on one record, and we gonna keep the visuals, um, you know, very interesting. We ain't just gonna stand in front of the cameras. We gonna really make y'all really look like what the hell is going on in these visuals, and that's the key, I think. Um, especially with me, I try to make my visuals had that um that what the fuck kind of ordeal. Mm -hmm. I did it with Tap Life, not even trying to, to be honest. Funny thing about that, it was supposed to be a stripper party, and um, the strippers never showed up, so I was dressed. You know what I'm saying? You know, for the stripper party with the, you know, with the leggings and all that. So we end up, I end up calling the video, man, shooting the video and it end up going viral. So like I said, we're going to have one of those uh, what the fuck moments on all our videos. Not necessarily like that, but, you know, going, you know, um, more artistic every time. You know what I mean? Like I said, that one was kind of not even planned. That just kind of happened, literally. Who, who's your dream collab on, my guy? What you say? If you had one, if you got one person, one that you could collab with, that you think that you gonna make a hot record, not somebody that you like, that you watch, a dope collabo that you think gonna take you to the next level. I don't even gotta think about it. I would say Money Man, all day. Oh shit, Money Man, all day. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like he the people's champ first and foremost. You know what I mean? A lot of people love him because he's he's industry but not industry at the same time. You know what I mean? And um, Money Man Independent. I, I really like the independent wave. And, and he really stands for a lot that I, because um, I came up listening to Money Man, if that gives you any idea. You know what I mean? So, you know, Money Man was a real big inspiration for me. And I feel like um, a lot of my sound drives from Money Man. So it's a no brainer. You know, I'd I, I be BC before anything. <laughs> That's a no brainer. Now that's what's up. I, I did a sit down with Money Man, I think two, three years ago. No, was it around? And then uh SO and I actually went to one of his events too. That he okay. had at, um he had it at the Julon. Julon. Oh yeah. Yeah. He good dude, good dude, man. So I could see that happening, yo. Especially yeah, the way y'all talk on records. That that's some really slick talking on that record, B. Exactly. No, my Money Man people, um, they definitely in tune. I can say um, me and Money Man been in tune. You follow me on Instagram. You know what I mean? Me and his manager, we chop it up from time to time. I won't say we have a, a strong, strong relationship, but he know who I am. And um, he definitely watching. You know what I mean? Salute Money Man, you know? Definitely keep doing your thing, big bro. Nice, man. I'm sorry. So are you looking to um, get your music on that radio platform? Are you just good with the streaming and the videos and the visuals and all that? Or are you trying to go mainstream as an independent? I am actually trying to go mainstream. Uh, me and my PR, we talk about that a lot. Uh, we really trying to, we don't want to force it yet. So we got, while we got it all set up to do that, we really want to break a record on that lower, you know, portion. And then once it really shoots up past, you know, the millions, you know, we think at that point we might have one. We might, you know, go into that record to see, you know, will it, you know, take to the mainstream audience at that point. So I feel like definitely, definitely. Okay, okay. We, got, we kind of got, got a plan. Up. So you got a real plan because we always ask people that um, come on the show, what's your plan? And they always be like, yo, I'm just going to go crazy. I'm going to do videos and I'm going to do songs and I'm going to drop. And that's how I'm coming. And I'll be like, yo, no disrespect. But that's not a plan, you know what I'm that's saying? So you, so you saying that you want to get to um, a certain amount of views? When I get to those views, if we think that that's gonna go mainstream, then we'll be able to put the marketing and promo behind that. Then, and that's how we're gonna know what we're gonna do. I fuck exactly, with that. I exactly, fuck with that. definitely, and and and, it, and it's really nothing short of that. You know what I mean? Because you know, we my first time with Cap Life, I hit 150,000 views, and this was in three months. 
So I feel like we're doing pretty good, you know, especially as my first video um, as the new name, Band of Sick. You know what I mean? So it's pretty good that we do what we got going right now. And um, I feel like once I do this song with Ruga, because like I said, um, my, my cousin, he already doing millions of views right now. Um, Cause he got a lot of that um, FBG duck wave going on right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. you know, that's duck with cuz. So um, um, I believe, you know, once we get the right record, I don't really want to get them on a drill. I want to get them on something different. You know what I mean? So once we get the right record that I feel like could really break into the industry, you know, me and him, we might, you know, why well, see in future, I sell racks on racks on racks into the game. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how I'm looking at it. You know what I mean? You just got to find that right sound and then the right fan base to, to you know, promote with the sound and then get it in that market and then you're good. And I feel like that's what we're doing right now. Okay. Um, how many hours do you sleep? And the reason why I'm asking that is because the way you intricately, the, the intricacy of how you're thinking about your records, your audience. I can tell you be in front of the computer like, all right, this is, this is research uh -huh, on Spotify. I'm not dropping my song at 3 p.m. I respect shit like that. You know what I mean? I, that's why I want to get into the mind of it. I would say, um, I go to sleep pretty early. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm an early dude because I wake up so early. Me too. I, I sleep maybe like nine or 10, and then I'm up, you know, probably like at four or five. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm up at two or three, you know, and I'm I'm up doing things at that time where I got, you know, it's quiet. I can um think more. And they say at three o'clock is when your brain, I think, is the most aware or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, I make my best music <laughs> at that time. And um, I think I put my best ideas together as well. So nah, I, I see where you're going with that. I appreciate mm -hmm. it as well, boss. Mm -hmm. Nah, 100 grand, man. Yeah, it just seems like that you've got a good head on your shoulders compared to a lot of people that you talk to. You know what I'm saying? So knowing Appreciate where you want to go and knowing and knowing what you want to be, knowing who 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 you want to collab with, when you want to try to move on to the next level, being very aware that it's not free. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that they don't really get that side that they want somebody to make them a star. And what they what are they gonna get from making you a star? They're not gonna make nothing. You know what I'm saying? No. So, so what's next for you though? Um, I think now at this point, um, I got a video on the 15th that's about to drop. Um, we addressing a lot of, I won't say hate, but I would say negativity that's been going on. It's it's a lot of, you know, artists that's kind of been throwing shade my way. So we addressing a couple of things in this song. Why they, Why they doing that though? Um, mainly because um like I said, I got the light right now in the city, and a lot of people don't want to invest in themselves in, in, in Minnesota. So I, so when they see somebody everywhere, for an example, when I drop a record, you see sponsor posts, you see me on YouTube everywhere, you know, you really see the promotion behind it. You see Instagram algorithms, you see blogs. When the other artists drop a record, you know, it's just maybe they, they friends sharing it. So I feel like, you know, and, and this is my thinking of me thinking from when I was sick to punchline. I, I would attack artists because I felt like they fan base would, you know, maybe be my fan base if they responded. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like, you know, a lot of artists maybe take it in that perspective now. But I don't really say the artist's names. I'll just make a mention to you so you know that I'm talking about you. Um, the, only, um, the only artist I really mention is AOKD. And I feel like I had a real serious relationship with LKD. He came to Minnesota. This was back when Rico Reckless and them, um, you know, had the whole video of him going viral, beat him up or whatever. Shouts out to Reckless. <laughs> 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 and I really try to help, bro. Like, like, like for real, for real, though. You know what I'm saying? We we ended up trying to, you know, um, um get into a Rico, getting ourselves into a situation. And, you know, um, only for him to come back and do some food shit and um try to sell me a verse. And I told him, you know, little brother, you my little brother, I'll buy a verse from me. I'll give you some bread if you want some bread. But he ended up trying to, you know, finesse me out of that. So that's what I'm speaking on. And a couple of other artists buying views and shit like that I'm speaking on. <laughs> Man, I mean, don't you think that it could be the fact that people down in Minnesota, they don't really know the game. And then when they see you do, doing certain things, they might think that you're trying to buy your way into the game by sponsoring PC. So people don't know about marketing and, and, and promo because they can't see it. But it's very, it's very important to everything that you're trying to do. But when you're just the creative and you don't know about business, 
they will look at you and be like, yo, he, oh, yo, yo, people know him because he, he's paying money to sponsor all over the grand. He, he just spent a thousand dollars. That's what you're supposed to do. Exactly. But they're, but they're looking at you like that you're doing something that most organic people don't do. That's organic. Play a sponsor and let people see yourself and then respond to what they see. Exactly. So, I, so, so it, it, it goes back to the crab in the barrel mentality that you was talking about. Definitely. So that's why I'm going to get to my thing and just say, because you going back there and putting 40 people on a record, I understand why Heineken is like, you know, Heineken is thinking, I'm reading his mind like, why would you do that? You go get the people that you really fuck with, you're two or three. Right. Y'all with them, y'all promote each other, and y'all move forward. Why do you, why, why are you, my, my last question to you is this. Mm -hmm. Why are you so insistent of going back to a place that you saying ain't no real love there and you, and you popping in LA? Explain that to me. All right, so check this out. Uh, a lot of people ask me this question too. And, and I get this question from family members, from um, even some people that really support me in Minnesota. And it's crazy because um, I used to have, a, this is how I put it, I used to have a studio in Minnesota and I would record thousands of artists. I mean, thousands of artists. So when I see like some of the artists that a lot of people in Minnesota, I would say um, Dick Ride or look up to, so to speak, that, that are like some of the city's favorite. You know what I mean? You know how you got a promoter that may have a little cousin or some shit like that that he pushing or, you know what I mean? Something like that. Of course. So um, these are the haters. It's not the true fans. The true fans showing support, they there, they in the comments saying, fuck with their time on, keep doing your thing. It's the artists that disguise themselves, and not all artists, just the artists that don't really mess with me, have songs with me, never interacted with me, or never really um, had a chance and opportunity to. So instead of, you know, trying to get a seat at the table, they would try to take the, the, the other way. So I, I don't try to put every artist in the bracket to say, oh, man, I'm mad at Minnesota because you know, majority of them is doing this. You know, I, I honestly see a lot of hate and then I see a lot of love at the same time. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a, it's, it's a double blade. You know what I mean? I, and, and me being a bigger person and a man about my shit, I just want to make sure that I'm not overlooking the, the good because of the bad. You know what I mean? Before you say your question, Hans, it just seems like people who have that mentality, it just don't work out. Likewise, <laughs> no, definitely. You know what I'm saying, like, like, I'm from South Side, Jamaica, Queens, my dude. So I know what it's about. I go back, but I'm not going back all the time to do this and do that. I go back and fuck with who fucks with me. Definitely, right. I definitely do that when when people call me out. But I'm I, I can't personally say that I'm I'm gonna put something together. Right, the people who I know ain't gonna value what I got going on. I'm not gonna spread myself thin. And that's why I asked you that, to just be straight up. You know I mean? No, that makes sense. And it, you know, it, 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 it put a lot in my brain as well. You know what I mean? It gives me something to think about as well. So I, I appreciate that, that you putting that in my brain, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. now, only thing I could add on to that, if somebody told me Jay-Z came out with an album with 50 songs, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't want to hear 50 straight Jay-Z songs. <laughs> so the fact you're trying to put 40 niggas on at the same time, I would, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would just say pick two or three, bust a song, see how it goes. Then when you got time again, swing another two or three. Yeah. Yeah, because you got okay. 40. Out of them 40 niggas, five of them is Dirty ain't shit niggas. Oh no, no, 25 of them is dirty ain't shit niggas. So you know it's gonna be static. You're gonna be like, this cox, somebody gonna come late, be like, so what? You paid a hundred thousand for the studio. They gonna be mad at the video time that they get, the bars that they get. It's gonna be an issue, G. Yo, yo, sick. I needed a 99 bars, nigga. Bad school advice. Focus on yourself first, okay? Once right. you get yourself popping, then you go back and you do what you can for who you can do it for. 
pretty much. Right, that's some good advice, though. I appreciate that, though. That's some good advice. I, I ain't no. gonna lie. I, I, never, I never looked at it like that from that perspective, and that's why sometimes it's good to, you know, keep your mouth closed and keep your ears open. You know Think what I mean? Think about this. It, it took you making money for your baby mother to understand what was going on, and you share a kid with her. Man, you want <laughs> these niggas to understand, and they from the same hood and area as your baby mother? Oh, nigga. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Yo, yo, give us a drop, dude. Bag fuel, hot new hip hop. Yo, yo, hey man. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me say this. Bag uh, fuel, bag fuel, next up in hot new hip hop. Bag fuel, next up, hot new hip hop, man. It's your boy Ban Up Sick. You already know we in tune right now. Cap life. You know what I'm saying? We out here in LA living a uh, good life. You know what I'm saying? We got the sun, you know, all that. So Y'all be in tune with me, man. Ben up said we drop it right now. Let's get it. Boom. All right. Thank you, G's. Yes, sir. Uh, I appreciate it, bro. I, pre I appreciate that advice too, man. That, that that's for real, for real. I, I pre that's love, bro. That that's was love. What we all about, my dude. We don't want to just do this thing. We want to give people jewels as well. He Heineken is big on sharing a perspective that we have and giving it to people who really need it that's coming along. Definitely, I, I, I man, I'm, I'm def I appreciate y'all. What's y'all Instagram? I'm trying to, I, I need to follow y'all ASAP oh, we, though, for real. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll send you a DM then, so that yeah, way, send, right after. Send me a DM, send me a DM, bro, because I, I need to follow y'all, and we gonna, we gonna keep in touch for real. And for real. Just, I want to gram. Yeah, you want to gram as, as band up sick? Yeah, yup, band up sick, exactly. Because yeah. uh, just to close out, yesterday we Esso and I did a sit down, and this nigga had a hundred songs, and Esso like, yo. Drop that shit or don't talk to us, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> drop all 100, nigga. No, I said, I said, I said, if he don't drop 100, motherfuckers better start DMing me so I could call this motherfucker. He better drop them joints, yo. All 100. Back <laughs> so, all 100. All right, man. All right. We about to Appreciate hit you on that. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. I, 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 I just followed you, G's. Okay, bet I'm finna I'm finna link in with you right he now. That's so W R L D is me. So you good? Okay, right. got you, got you. I see you right there. All right, okay, boss. Awesome.